where Husker fans or Redcasters right now want to know, and this gets us into talking about next season. Uh, I think you posted this here, Adam. Yeah, the you had some power rankings from May 26th. And uh-huh. you said power rankings should be viewed as how a team would fare uh, versus the field at a neutral site. Teams ranked higher would be projected to beat those lo- lower. And right now, if you look at Nebraska's schedule this next season, based off these power rankings, uh, you know, I have a, a black dot with a with a frowny face and an L uh, to show the teams that we play that are ranked above us. But there's six teams that are ranked below us on this uh, ranking. And it doesn't matter if we won or lost of those teams last year. And if anyone that knows our record knows we lost to most of them. But <laughs> just based solely off of this alone, without going any deeper, we're six and three before we start talking about the non-conference schedule. And that's where, hey, if you can go two and one, you know, lose to Oklahoma, but beat the uh, beat the two group of five teams, all of a sudden you're sitting at uh, you're sitting at eight and four. And if we say that, if we predict eight and four, that, you know, there's a certain amount of fans that will come back. And Husker fans have been beaten down a little bit over the years, and they'll come back and go, what, what are you talking about? What are you smoking? But just based off of the numbers right there alone, the power ranking numbers, if I said eight and four, Adam, is that my out of line? Is that – no, it's right no you're, you're you're not out of line. Um, that's the I think the second most likely r- projected record I think I have. Yeah, there you go. There's there's a graphic. The most likely record I have is seven and five, um, just because of you know home and away how how that falls. Um, but yeah, the, the, you're more like the, the the way the schedule lines up and it's roster talent and the coaching and all the all those things that play into it line up. You're more likely you should you should be more likely to go eight and four than six and six this year with the schedule. That's that's that should be more expected than going six and six. So, Adam, what what goes into your your power rankings? What kind of data points and how does that, I guess, compare if you know, compared to some of the other power rankings that are out there? Well, uh, my my power rankings are are really simple. All all it is is it's it's coaching staff efficiency, which, you know, we use from our database. It's. you know, uh, returning production, you know, what, what does the roster return? And even with the, with the whole um, uh, influx of, of the transfer portal here, that's really taken on a whole life of its own because you have to bring in guys' production from other, from other um, programs. Right. Mm -hmm. And that there's a little twist on that as well, because let's say a wide receiver is coming into um, a triple option offense and he had 800 yards receiving at his old program that's going to matter almost nil at the in, in triple option offense. Okay. So you have to kind of um, use a sliding scale there on, on the importance of those production numbers based on the offense that, 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 that uh, the player is coming into. So um, there's some returning production, both on offensive and defensive sides uh, roster talents, huge, you know, Dave knows this. He, he projects games to um, using even more simple model than I do. Um, and roster talent's a huge, uh, hmm. a huge part of this. So, you know, and I know Husker fans are tired of hearing it, but they're, they still have the most talented roster in the West. I mean, they have since they, since they got in the big 10, hmm. um, yeah. it's, it's almost, uh, uh, an anomaly the, the, the way they've lost with the most talented roster. <laughs> it's, 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 it's maddening from a, from an analytics standpoint, but so Adam, how do you evaluate talent? There's that purely on recruiting or because it's tougher mm-hmm. to, to put analytics on, on development, probably to your point. Well, it's no, really it's not because we, 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 we look at, you know, and, and Dave has looked more into this than I have. Uh, if you want to look at development, you, you look at, you look at, you look at schools of who have, have taken guys who are three star, four star average mm-hmm. and pumped out yeah. more draft picks than, than the Iowa's and Wisconsin than expected. Yeah. And, and, and Dave has, has done a lot. And even, even he, Dave has even reached down into uh, undrafted free agents and how many of those guys from each program have made rosters. So there is ways to, to, uh, to, to measure development and, and, and programs. Um, that doesn't really feed in much in, in, into, into my, projection formula here that we're talking about but but there is a, a, a really quantitative way to, to to look at that if if you wanted to mm-hmm. well you know one of the things that we were talking about was with the power rankings was the wins and losses and this is a, a tweet we had from a uh, husk guys a couple weeks or so back and it was a uh, sports illustrated did their power rankings right well this is mm-hmm. and there's different power rankings all over the place but here's <laughs> theirs and they have Nebraska, you know, <laughs> basically he's like second, second in the West, all season champs. And we play number 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10 
based off of these power rankings, right? And I think mm-hmm. right now, from a Husker standpoint, from a Husker fan standpoint, is that compared to a season ago where we played Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State, and we're replacing them with Michigan, Indiana, and Maryland, or not Maryland, um, uh, Indiana and Rutgers. And then, you know, uh, and then, so just those three three games alone, um, and then you're playing Oklahoma here at home instead of on the road, just the schedule flip alone, whether we got better or not, and hopefully we did with 33 newcomers coming in and, and 16 or so transfer guys, hopefully we're getting better with our on-field talent, but just the, the schedule alone, we're all hoping, I guess, fingers are crossing that that would jump us at least into the bowl game and, and higher category. Yeah. 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 Well, I just wanted to ask, follow up on that a little bit, I guess, uh, but maybe th- that could go forward to this year's bowl projection, I guess. So it sounds like this year's data is telling you somewhere between six and six and eight and four, most likely. You combine those three columns and you're near 50%, essentially, right? So mm-hmm. I was just wondering, um, you know, the the predictions in past years, like last year, where were you? you did you have Nebraska or the last couple of years where? I mean, no criticism here because we've all underperformed. We all know Nebraska underperformed. And I think yeah. anybody's power rankings would probably put them, you know, higher than what they were. But I'm just curious, like compared to say last year. Yeah, last year I think I think my my model had them going five and seven. Um the year before that, I think was the COVID year and I had them going I think four and four, I think it was, or it had them going five hundred in, in the COVID year mm-hmm. and they ended up going three and five. Um, so it's it's been fairly it's been fairly close with Nebraska. Now last year, you know, um, them going three and nine. I think a couple of those games, I think, as as all Nebraska fans would probably agree, should have flipped to the win column. So I don't think five and seven was too far off of last year's uh, last year's team. You know, yeah, um, yeah. And so it's 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 actually it's actually it, it's it's been pretty nails with Nebraska the last few years. Have, have there been other teams harder to the, to predict? Yeah, I mean. Teams like, well, okay. For example, when 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 uh, when when um, Bill Snyder was at Kansas State, his teams were just a headache to predict. He he was, I, I used to I used to refer to him to Gandalf the Purple because he was a witch. <laughs> because you know, there's no way he should have been able to, to 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 eke out some of those records with 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 the with the teams that he had put together. But every year he would come through and he would he would over. Um, perform my projections by two or three wins every year. Wow, every year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no matter what. So teams like that that have a a coach in place that is just you know that level. Um, they they break through the the, the, the trends and, and and the projections that at least of, of of my analytics model and and are typically they're really really hard to, to pin down. Mm-hmm. Hey Dave, you're wearing an Iowa State hat. What's that from? Dog, this is my Jimmy Lake hat. <laughs> you want you want another story? So, go so anyway, for it. Go for it. We're, 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 it's time for a Dave story. So this is Uncle Dave's going to tell a story. So okay. gathering kids, can you say marijuana? Uh, no. Um, so what, this is what a family with, show, sir. <laughs> uh, I'm in Oregon, and one of you's in Colorado. So it's, it's, so anyways, this, this hat, this hat actually came by trends. Um. Now I knew that Jim. Now by our numbers, we knew Jimmy Lake made a terrible hire in Donovan as his offensive coordinator. Okay, so that was our first red flag. Um, so we knew he couldn't hire well, and that's part. That's part of our equation when we're working with athletic directors. Side note: is coaching when you hire a head coach. There's three parts, right? There's his recruiting, his ability to hire, and game and, and game situation. Okay, so there's three big things. So with Jimmy. The recruit, the the hiring part, we knew early he was garbage because he hired Donovan, worst or worst offensive coordinator in the Pac-12 before he even coached a game last year. All right, then I found out the dude offered the defensive coordinator position at Washington to a defensive lineman in the NFL who'd never called plays before. Wow, that sucks. And <laughs> the guy said no. <laughs> so then, Jimmy, so then Jimmy took over. So what happened is after they lost to Montana last year, they scored the game opening touchdown, never scored again at home against FCS Montana. Now, since 2000, there have been four power five teams that have lost an FCS game that made a bowl. So somebody was popping off on Twitter and I said, hey, I will bet you a duck hat because I'm a duck alum. 
I will bet you my duck hat against your Iowa State hat that Washington doesn't go to a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Jimmy Lake hat. So thank you, Jimmy Lake, who still doesn't have a job, uh, but cashed a generational paycheck. So what the hell does he care? Yeah. No. <laughs> So um, don't don't lose to an FCS team or your season's pretty much shot. Pretty mm-hmm. much shot. Actually, would one of them that made the bowl game would have been Iowa because that one year they lost to uh, to North Dakota State, and I'm sure they turned around and won eight or so. Iowa might be one of them. Um, they're all good head coaches that that bounce back mm-hmm. though. Um, Iowa could have been one of them. I know for sure Mike Leach did it. Mm-hmm. He, he mm-hmm. lost an FCS game, and I think he ended up eight and four, nine and three, uh, and then Mike Riley. <laughs> Who? <laughs> um, Mike Riley at Oregon State before the regression um, lost an FCS game and made a bowl. But but the numbers said, look, it, 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 when when you get off to that bad of a start, it just means you're a really bad team for the most part, uh, mm-hmm. and you're not going to a bowl. So yeah, um, and- I the numbers told a story, and efficiently, yeah. I got a <laughs> Adam. Is that why you're wearing an Oregon State hat? Is that for Mike Riley? Or- <laughs> Uh, No, that's not for Mike Riley. (laughs) Not at all.